Okay. This one's a bit of a rattlesnake. Uh, we're condensing this really heinous looking logarithmic expression. We have three logs. They're all natural logs. Okay. Uh, we, we have this one eighth on the outside. Now again, my suggestion when you're going through these is to work from the inside out. So, so attack all of these logarithms first, and then we'll talk about this one eighth at the end. Uh, first things first, we have a natural log here, a natural log here. We have this seven in front. So the first thing we should do is raise that back into the exponential level. Remember, I've said, seen this a couple of times. If you're going to be condensing logs, the first thing you want to do is make sure there's no coefficients. Right? It's not a step-by-step -step procedure, but it is something we want to be cognizant of. It's, it's, it's better to do this without coefficients uh, to start. We need to move that number up. Now, we've got three logs here. Okay. Now, we've got subtraction in both of these. We've got a couple of different approaches what we can do with this, but the best approach is probably just to work left to right. Okay. So what do we talk about with the difference of two logs? The difference of two logs is one logarithm, when I want to condense them, the difference of two logs can become the log of a quotient or a fraction. So I'm sliding this x underneath here, writing that as one log. I haven't done anything with this. Okay. So we have that statement. Now here again, we've got two logs that are being subtracted. So because I have two logs that are being subtracted, I want to write them as, I want to condense them into one log. I'm going to make my bracket a little bigger here, right? Because that would be one natural log, but then this entire piece here goes in the numerator and this goes in the denominator. So that would be x plus 6 to the 7th power, oh, that's a 7 x plus 6 to the 7th over x, all over x squared minus 16, like that. Try to indicate this big fraction bar because this is above that, okay? Sidebar for a second, right? We've talked about this before. When you have, you want to call this a triple decker fraction, you can call it whatever you want, but when you have, and let's break it down into something simple, when you have a fraction, divided by an integer, right? What happens? What happens when you do division? The number gets smaller. If you're dividing a fraction by an integer, that outcome is going to be even smaller, right? Uh, the, the reason for that, I mean, that's just common sense when you think about breaking something into more pieces, but this is really two-thirds divided by four, which is two-thirds divided by four over one, which is two-thirds times one-fourth, right? We have to flip that second fraction over, multiply by its reciprocal, so we end up with two over 12. We've seen this a handful of times already. Uh, when you have a fraction divided by a whole number, the shortcut is just to multiply that straight into that denominator. Why am I showing you that? Because that's exactly what we're gonna be doing here, okay? So what we end up doing when you have a fraction divided by a non-fraction, I can't call this an integer, right? But when you have a fraction divided by a non-fraction, this piece is just going to slide straight into here. Okay? Not with another logarithm, that's just simplifying this triple decker fraction. So we have 1 eighth, all right, times the natural log, now I just have one fraction, it's x plus 6 to the seventh power over x times x squared minus 16. So we have that. Okay. Now, nearly done because we've condensed this into one logarithm, but we still have this one eighth in front. And again, we're in a situation where we were here. Now, oh, come on now. Oh, oh, oh. oh. oh there we go. We have one log with a number in front. We've got some stuff happening on the inside, okay? This is, work with me, smart board. Work with me. There we go, okay? We have one log with all of this on the inside, right? We know that all of this is on the inside of this log, so we don't need these brackets, all right? So if I write that like this, and this is not a step, you know, that I should say this is a step that you can skip. 
So we have this. This 1 8 is in front of that log. That has to go back into the exponential level. So we would have the natural log. And now we do need some sort of grouping symbol to say all of this, this 1 8 is going up it to be an exponent for all of this. So we would have x plus 6 to the 7th over x, x squared minus 16. All of this is raised to the 1 8th power. Okay. And before you start going crazy with all your exponent rules and saying, well, this gets multiplied by that, and this gets multiplied by that, and, this, and you start worrying about what to do with that. If all of this is raised to the 1 8th power, and I'm not supposed to have rational exponents, then I can rewrite this where instead of raising all of this to the 1 8th power, I can put it all under an 8th root. Okay, and again, I don't need parentheses anymore. This is its own grouping symbol. A radical symbol is its own grouping symbol. Okay, so I don't need parentheses around this. I know all of this is under here. I don't need to put parentheses around this inside the log because I'm not adding or subtracting anything else. This is one really horrible looking term inside this log. So we would put a bow on that and say we're done with that convention. 